Purge it down a little. Purge! Don't purge! You're sending me mixed messages, Rick! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 darkest moments on Rick and Morty. They're not robots, Rick! It's a figure of speech, Morty! They're bureaucrats! I don't respect them! Just keep shooting, Morty! For this list, we're going over the most disturbing, grim, and violent moments from the animated series Rick and Morty. Since some of these moments involve plot points, there will be spoilers ahead. If there's a Rick and Morty moment that haunts you forever that didn't make our list, get dark in the comments. Number 20. Beth's Choice When Rick takes Morty through a collection of memories so bad Morty asks to have them erased, things get pretty dark. What the hell is this? This, Morty, is my archive of all the experiences you've begged me to remove from your life, lest you go insane. In this memory, an alien has kidnapped Beth Smith and makes her choose between which of her children to save, Morty or Summer. I am not an unreasonable man, Beth Smith. I know children are everything to a mammal. I will spare one of their lives. You simply have to choose. Summer! It's a classic Sophie's Choice dilemma. That is, until Beth immediately blurts out Summer's name. Rick arrives to save the day and finds the situation immediately awkward. And it certainly is. Morty now knows that his mother would rather he die and his sister live. She didn't even hesitate. What's, what, what, what's with you assholes? Number 19. Wooden Jerry's Fate when Rick's decoy family makes a decoy family, and so on, eventually the quality starts to degrade. This thing feels pretty far gone. Not only are the decoys liable to be anywhere, but also we don't know how many there are. You get far enough down the decoy line and shit starts to get weird. You ever make a copy of a copy? A wooden version of Jerry abandons his family to die, hoarding the varnish for himself. In a post credit scene, Wooden Jerry applies varnish to himself and swims in a river, only to be attacked by beavers who build a dam out of his body. However, after a flood, he's submerged and wakes up in a desert in the far future. Why am I still alive? Oh God, is there anything left? Hello? After spending time as an ornament in a cowboy bar, Wooden Jerry is set on fire. Then he awakens to see that he's built into a cross. Wooden Jerry betrayed his family so that he could live. His karmic punishment is that he never dies. Christianity again? After cowboys? You went all the way back around? Oh God, why can't I die? This is the worst thing that's ever happened to anyone! Number 18, Strawberry Smiggles. Television standards in different realities are different from ours, and that includes TV commercials. Seems like TV from other dimensions has a somewhat looser feel to it. Yeah, it's got an almost improvisational tone. While watching interdimensional cable, Rick and Morty watch an ad for Strawberry Smiggles, a brand of cereal. The mascot, Top Hat Jones, is an amalgam of the mascots for Lucky Charms and Tricks, being a leprechaun with rabbit ears. Much like those characters, Jones is also insistent that no one get his cereal. God forbid anyone ever take my smeggish little paper snibbles. I'm keeping them all for me. Mm, oh, mm. Last bite. Mm, oh, now they're all resting comfortably in my stomach. While he does eat the cereal, unlike those real world mascots, Jones arguably has a worse fate. Soon after eating the sugary breakfast meal, he's attacked by two children who cut him open to get at the partially digested strawberry smiggles. Jones claims to see demons, and watching him get torn apart is equally terrifying for us. Jeez, Rick, oh my god! That's some pretty hardcore stuff to, you know, for a cereal commercial! Well, you know, Morty, I mean, you want to sell boxes of cereal, you gotta, you gotta pump the gas a little. Pedal to the metal, Morty! Number 17. Wasp Dinner when Rick dies, he finds his brain re-uploaded to clone bats in other realities. Unfortunately for him, most of them turn out to be fascist dystopias. But you are down with fascist dystopias, right? Yes. That yes was pretty liberal with the letter Y. That is, until he reaches one inhabited by intelligent wasps. Wasp Rick, in contrast to all the fascist Ricks, is surprisingly empathetic and nice for being a member of a species that eats its prey alive. He even invites our Rick to dinner with his lovely family. Oh, don't be sorry, sweetie. We're all in this together. We're wasps. Except, well, it means they all devour a still-living and intelligent caterpillar who looks like Morty's math teacher, Mr. Goldenfold. Also, his children. The family being well-adjusted despite the grisly meal they're partaking in makes for great, if grim, comedy, though. Huh. Guess I don't have it as bad as I thought. 
Number 16, Rick's Engineering Mortys. When evil Morty invites Rick and Morty to dinner at the Citadel of Rick's, things are bound to get crazy and violent. Evil Morty restrains the duo and scans Rick's brain for the blueprints to the Citadel. You can't scan an entire brain over appetizers. Oh, most of yours got scanned a long time ago. You probably don't remember. He also lets Morty in on some of the Rick's dirty laundry. He explains that while evil Rick's may use Morty's for camouflage, the good ones do it too. Rick's discovered it worked so well that they began doing anything to create Mortys to accompany them. Sure, Rick's could scour infinity for naturally occurring grandsons, but why bother? These methods include manipulating Morty's parents into falling in love and even genetically engineering Mortys for the express purpose of being sidekicks and servants to Rick's. To manipulate and use your own family like that? That is bleak stuff. Rick, say this isn't true! It isn't the whole truth. Liar. Liar! It's complicated! I'm not busy! Number 15. Simple Rex. One of the more bizarre things about Rick and Morty is that an entire city's worth of alternate versions of the genius Rick and not-so-genius Morty live and work together on one massive space station. All the different Ricks from all the different realities got together to hide here from the government. One of the businesses on the Citadel is a cookie factory, whose products are flavored by the joy distilled from the single memory of a Rick held prisoner. We captured that moment. We run it on a loop through simple Rick's mind. And the chemical that makes his brain secrete goes into every simple Rick's simple wafers wafer cookie. As if this wasn't grim enough, one of the factory's employees frees the trapped Rick by killing him, but is then used to replace simple Rick just when he thinks he's escaped. We captured that taste, and we keep giving it to him so he can give it right back to you and every bite of new simple Rick freedom wafer selects. Jeez, and we thought Willy Wonka was diabolical. Number 14, Morty Purging. While on a planet that basically does its own version of the movie franchise The Purge every year by acting out violent crimes with no repercussions, Rick and Morty get caught up in the event. There's more where that came from! You wanna get purged, you bring it! Drop, <coughs> drop your shit, drop it all! Morty, go get their shit, hurry up. I only had one of those things I threw. I'm holding a box of Tic Tacs right now. When attempting to send a signal from a lighthouse, Morty loses his temper to the point where he pushes the elderly lighthouse keeper down the steps. I tried to be a good guest. He dragged it out of me. I'm taking down this beacon. No, stop. That's not fair. Just because you hate your own writing doesn't make me a bad person. <laughs> when the Iron Man style suits Rick called for arrive, he and Morty go on a rampage to get back to their ship with Morty in particular showing great relish in taking out his frustrations on the villagers, not all of whom are out to kill them. I think, uh, I think those people were just hiding. I don't give a shit! Okay, Morty, now you're just shooting corpses. It's a dark turn by the teenage protagonist. Luckily, it's all because of a chemical, right? Number 13, Mulan McNugget Sauce. The season two finale of Rick and Morty sees Rick Sanchez give himself up to the Galactic Federation and going to prison, seemingly to protect his family. Eh, hey, what are you in for? Everything. However, after escaping imprisonment and his son-in-law Jerry asks his wife Beth to choose between them, Rick's motives are shown to be less clear-cut. In a deranged rant to Morty in the garage, echoing the one in the pilot episode, Rick reveals his imprisonment was an elaborate way for him to push Jerry out of their lives, while also promising darker adventures to come. Welcome to the darkest year of our adventures. First thing that's different, no more dad, Morty. Oh, he threatened to turn me into the government, so I made him and the government go away. Oh. He also manages to make a tangent about Szechuan sauce for McDonald's surprisingly menacing. I'm not driven by avenging my dead family, Morty. That was fake. I I'm driven by finding that McNugget sauce. Nuggets. I want that Mulan McNugget sauce, Morty. That's my series arc, Morty. Hell? If it takes nine seasons, I want my McNugget tipping sauce, Szechuan Rick? sauce, Morty. Number 12, Evil Morty Takes Over. After Rick's near destruction of the Citadel and the deaths of its council, the bizarre dimension-hopping city is in need of new leadership. An election is held, and a Morty manages to take a surprising lead. Yeah! Yeah! Holy shit! However, an assassination attempt by one of his former Morty staffers and a few other hints make it clear that something is off. You gotta listen to me! I, I worked for him! I was his campaign manager! That Morty is not what he seems! All becomes clear when the newly elected Morty leader has an influential cabal of Ricks murdered and a familiar tune begins playing, revealing this Morty to be the evil one previously encountered in the series, who has demonstrated that he can be just as bad or worse than any Rick. 
This seems like a good time for a drink and a cold, calculated speech with sinister overtones. Number 11, the talking cat's memories. Jerry meets a cat that can talk. The cat glosses over the how or the why. He just wants to have fun. Why, why, why can you talk again? It's not important, Jerry. Okay, but why Florida? Because they don't ask questions. They play volleyball, they party, and they have fun. Right, right. After hanging out with Jerry at the beach, the pair gets picked up by Rick. Feigning engine trouble, Rick puts the car down and traps the cat so he can scan the feline's mind. What is this? I need you in one spot for a clean mind scan. Mind scan? Look, you're overthinking it. The point of a talking cat is to have fun. Find the insinuation that I can't ask questions and have fun condescending. Y you find it condescending, Jerry? Yes. When viewing the cat's memories, Rick is highly disturbed, as is Jerry when he insists on looking. Both men have a breakdown from what they see and demand the cat leave. Get the hell out of here! But I've got nowhere to Get go! Out. Get out! Get out! Rick erases Jerry's memory of it in one of his kindest acts. We never see what the cat did, but Rick and Jerry both go to a dark enough place that our imaginations can do the rest. Number 10. Little Boy Kills Little Girl Morty's dad, Jerry, rarely goes on adventures with Rick, partly because of their mutual dislike, but also because Jerry is easily intimidated and it would be easy for him to die. The fate of the galaxy rests on your shoulders. Let's go. Put some pants on. Rick seeks to prevent this outcome by taking Jerry on a trip to a resort with an immortality field that prevents visitors from dying from otherwise fatal injuries, including a pair of alien children who shoot one another with real laser guns. The resort's covered in an immortality field. You can't die here. That's the gimmick. <laughs> An attempt on Rick's life unfortunately causes the field to deactivate, causing the little boy alien to shoot and kill the little girl, Lisa, who's presumably his sister. Talk about something that would mess you up for life. Lisa? Number 9. Morty Kills Nick After Morty spills portal fluid on his hand, it connects to Nick, a guy who claims to have been wronged by Rick. What's he doing? Is he out there making sure you see him collecting two crows? And now you're thinking, gee, maybe if he cares enough to hurt me this bad, dot, dot, dot. <sighs> Break the cycle, Marty. Change the things that you can change. That's what I did, and now I'm free. After Rick ditches Morty for a pair of crows, Morty decides to team up with Nick instead, breaking his new bud out of an asylum. However, Nick is soon revealed to be dangerous and unhinged. You don't get it, Morty. We're partners. Now fall in line or I'll make your life a living hell. No. When Morty tries to escape, the two get into a fight near a train. To sever their connection, literally, Morty cuts off his own hand by putting his arm on the tracks. He then drops his appendage into Nick's portal, essentially erasing his deranged ex-partner from existence. It's a bad and really weird way to kill someone, and another example of Morty's loss in morality. Number 8. Beth Shoots Mr. Poopy Butthole when parasites that insert themselves into the memories of people infest the Smith residence, it leads to a ton of dark moments. Summer, I've always loved you! Yep. Beth killing sleepy Gary, the man she thinks is her husband, is also quite dark. But this moment takes the cake. All the parasites are seemingly dead after the family kills everyone they only have fond memories of. But when they sit down to dinner, Beth is suspicious of Mr. Poopy Butthole. And she has a good reason to be. Is something wrong, Beth? The wacky character even seems to have inserted himself into the opening credits. However, upon shooting him, she discovers the strange yellow man is real and not a parasite. It traumatizes Beth and leads to Mr. Poopy Butthole's hospitalization. It is a phenomenal but incredibly sad twist. He'd like to be alone. He told me to tell you he's sorry you didn't have bad memories of him. If you love him, you should leave. Number 7. Keep Summer Safe While visiting a dimension where giant spiders coexist with humans, Rick, Morty, and Summer encounter engine trouble. While the former two investigate the problem inside the battery, Rick instructs his car's artificial intelligence to keep Summer safe. The AI takes this incredibly seriously, as it first stuns or kills people who come close to the car. This eventually draws the attention of the police, leading to a horrifically traumatic experience for one of the officers. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it was all my fault, I'm sorry. Daddy, leave the car alone. What, what? Leave the car alone. Hunter, go home. 
my god. Although the AI is able to resolve things peacefully eventually, its initial draconian methods are quite traumatizing for Summer and the viewers. If you're talking about the melting ghost babies, yes, please, no more of that. Number 6. Planetina Kills 300 Miners Morty meets a Captain Planet-like superhero named Planetina and falls hard for her. And who's your friend over there? Oh, this is Morty Smith. He traveled 200 miles just to save a rabbit from the fire. He's a very special guy. So are you two dating? Oh, um, well, I, I, I... Yes, we are. He takes some extreme steps to be together with her, including running away from home and killing her now corrupted adult kid heroes who plan to sell her. However, Planetina's attempts to save the Earth become increasingly violent. This culminates in her confrontation with a group of miners, who refuse to stop work since it's their livelihood. Easy for you to say, you can live how you want. We need the jobs. Let's go, boys. She can't stop us. We'll, we'll get him next time. There's no time left! Can't you hear the Earth screaming? Planetina snaps and destroys the mine, killing 300 people. Morty is understandably horrified that someone he loves is now a mass murderer. While their breakup is hard to watch, Planetina's eco-terrorism is even more upsetting. This is the only way I can save Earth. The only way I can save you. If that's the only way, I, I don't want to be saved. Please go. But I love you. Number 5. Rick's Real Backstory Rick has always been vague on his origins, but during their confrontation with evil Morty at the Citadel, Morty takes a look into Rick's memories. Through them, we learn that Rick's original wife and daughter were killed by another Rick, which Rick previously claimed was false. His pursuit of their killer leads Rick to go on a rampage across the multiverse, fighting various versions of himself and galactic governments. He massacres so many Ricks, the others essentially band together against him, with the ones who survive creating the Citadel and suing for peace. He then crashes into Morty's garage and begins his adventures with him. Rick's capacity for self-destruction is on a scale that boggles the mind. No wonder he's got issues. Wow, Rick. I feel a lot better having seen all that. Number 4. Rick's Time Loop Torment A reset on Portal users sends Rick to his original dimension. Instead of resetting Portal Travel, I may have reset Portal Travelers. Too late to apologize. His doorbell rings and he greets his neighbor, Mr. Goldmanbach Majorian. The elderly man reveals a note he wrote himself, which implies that before Rick left his dimension, he created a time loop in the minds of everyone on Earth, if not the entire universe. My mind is held captive in a time loop, trapped in the day of a traumatic event by the agony of a formidable intelligence, but also that my captor forgot about aging, that my body spoils and yearns for death while my soul remains stuck in place. While everyone still aged, they were unable to die and were stuck reliving the same day Rick's family died. Rick stops the time loop soon afterwards, killing Mr. Goldman Bach Majorian and presumably a lot of other people too. Oh, sweet death. Was that symbolic? Are you letting go? Rick is positively terrifying when you stop to think about what he can do. Number three, burying their own bodies. Rick's capacity for destruction is as big as his ego, and that ain't small. After a request for a love potion from Morty turns viral, Rick's attempts to fix it actually make things worse, creating an apocalyptic spread of the virus that mutates the inhabitants of their version of Earth into monsters. Okay, well, sometimes science is more art than science, Morty. A lot of people don't get that. Rather than attempting to fix things, Rick and Morty abandon that version of reality and go to a version of Earth where their counterparts died, burying their own dead bodies in the backyard. While Rick takes it in stride, Morty is completely traumatized, and we would be too in his shoes. Number 2. Rick's Attempt at Self-Destruction Rick's personal life outside his family is rarely delved into, and one of the few times we have seen a reference to it is when he runs into an ex-love interest of his, Unity, a hive mind. We need a hang glider and a crotchless Uncle Sam costume. And I want the entire field of your largest stadium covered end to end with naked redheads. And I want the stands packed with every man that remotely resembles my father. Although they and Rick reconnect and engage in a lot of hedonistic activities, ultimately Unity breaks up with Rick after their intoxication leads to a loss of control over their unruly hosts. I lose who I am and become part of you. 
because in a strange way, you're better at what I do without even trying. While it was probably in both of their interests, Rick takes it harder than one might expect given his character, attempting to vaporize his own head and only surviving by passing out in a drunken stupor. Rick Sanchez is a monumentally self-destructive person, but seeing him actually try to end his own life was still shockingly dark. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mr. Jellybean and Morty Morty's own attempts at finding a fun adventure do not turn out well. Excuse me! We are two humble heroes in search of adventure! Oh my god, so embarrassing. He and Rick soon land themselves on trial for murder of a giant, but after being exonerated from any wrongdoing, they come across something even more upsetting. While in a restroom in a tavern, Morty encounters an anthropomorphic jelly bean who soon attempts to force himself on Morty, forcing the distraught teen to fight off his attacker in a brutal and incredibly upsetting moment. No, stay! Go with the flow! Stop! You're making me really uncomfortable! Seeing one of the protagonists assaulted is an incredibly dark place to take the show to. We're just glad Rick gave Mr. Jellybean what he deserved. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.